Well, g'day guys. So we're back out here in the beautiful Aussie bush and just come up into the mountains to do another traditional swag camp. So we've just got the swag on the back and once we stop for camp, I'll do a bit of a rundown of how I've got it set up and what's inside. Um, but yeah, we just come up to this really beautiful river. I'm just going to make my way down and find a nice spot to set up camp for tonight and do a bit of fishing as well because I've never fished this river, so really keen to see how it goes. We've got a beautiful day and it feels bloody good to be out here, so let's get a move on. All right, so there's a few nice runs around here. There's uh, some rapids down there as well. So I think we might get the rod out and have a few casts. Like I guess I've never fished this river before, so I don't really know what fish are gonna be in here. I'm hoping there might be some trout swimming around or maybe there's even some redfin, but we'll get the rod out and we'll find out soon enough. All right, because I'm hoping there might be some trout in here, might give this uh, little rainbow trout minnow lure a go. Oh. You have, you have got to be kidding me. Got what he snagged in the tree first cast. You are. <laughs> oh, a bit rusty with the old spin rod. Oh, I've got my lure back. I can't believe that, eh? That was a joke. Alright, take two. Saved him, but no fish. All right, well, absolutely zilch luck with the fishing so far. Um, looks very fishy, but like I said, I'm really not sure if there's um, yet any fish in this river, but it is about 2.30, so I think I should probably start trying to find a camp because the sun sets about five. And I'm just starting to move into this one, this gorge here. So there's definitely no campsites around here. It's very rocky, but it is really beautiful. It's such a, a beautiful section of the river. But uh, yeah, we'll try and go back. I think I saw a few little beaches that I could probably camp at. And um, yeah, we'll try and get that going and maybe we'll do a bit more fishing a bit later on. I think it's my two for camp. Really nice spot next to the river and got a nice sort of flat sandy spot to yeah, lay down the swag on. Alright, so before I take all this off, I'll give you guys a quick little rundown of how it sort of all works in case you haven't seen one of these swag videos before. Um, but also, for those who don't know, a swagman is a sort of a traditional Australian term for someone who used to move across the country looking for work back in the sort of 18 and early 1900s. Um, they sort of move across from like sheep or cattle station, move around the country, and this is how they would carry their gear. Then also when bushwalking started to take off, and this is also how they used to go for a bushwalk until they eventually invented backpacks. So it's a pretty unique way to go for a bushwalk and I quite like doing it. Obviously backpacks are probably better, but um, it's definitely, it has its um, benefits and it's quite a unique way to sort of get, get out there and experience the bush. But how it's sort of set up is you have this, um, what it's called a nose bag or a tucker bag. And inside this you'll have like your food and some other bits and pieces you want handy throughout the day. And that is tied to a shemag or like a tea towel or another bit of cloth. And then that is connected to the top of the swag on this strap. 
I've got it connected via a carabiner, but you'd, otherwise just tie it on. And then I've got this leather strap going from the bottom of the swag around to that top there as well. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a backpack. And so that way the weight is sort of evenly distributed over both shoulders. And then I've got my haversack here as well, which um, I'll sort of keep like my first aid kit and other bits and pieces I want like quick access to, like my water and things like that. So yeah, it's a pretty unique way to go for a bushwalk. How about we get this down on the ground and we'll go through and I'll show you guys what I've got inside it. Yeah, so I'll give you guys a bit of a close up how it's sort of set up. So you've got your nose bag or your tucker bag, just tied that to the schmag, and then I've tied that to the carabiner. And it's got this leather strap with another carabiner tied to that. And all the all the gears kept inside, so let's roll it out. Alright, so for this trip I wanted to do a bit of a challenge for myself. So I decided to do things pretty minimal for this trip. I only bought out with me um, 10 essential camp items. So that's not including food or clothing, um, but yeah, just 10 items that I can sort of use around camp. So I've really stripped everything right back for this trip. Um, but to start with, we've got the swag, and this is by Remote Projects. And this is a really nice quality swag. I got this about six months ago, and I've used it a couple of times and absolutely love it. Um, it doesn't have a bug mesh um, zipped in, uh, yeah, sewn into it, which I actually quite like because it means that this thing is going to last forever. Like, you're never going to get any holes in your bug mesh and have to throw the thing out. And if you do find that there are a lot of mosquitoes and bugs around, you can just buy an external um, bug, net, uh, bug net to put over the top of it. So Alton make a box bug net that you can just put over the top of this and then you're completely enclosed and that will protect you from any mozzies. But um, out here, I don't think I'm going to have any issue with any bugs. So uh, I've just got yeah, the swag. And then inside here, I've gone pretty simple for this trip. So I've just got a wool blanket. Um, so I didn't bring a quilt or a sleeping bag. I've just decided to bring a wool blanket. So I'm gonna see how that goes tonight. It's gonna to get pretty cold. It's probably gonna get down to around about two degrees, I think. Uh, so pretty keen to see how this goes. Uh, but I did bring with me an inflatable mat. This is by Cedar Summit, just cause I know around here there are a lot of rocks. So if it was gonna be like really sandy, then I would have been willing to maybe just sleep on the sand and use some sort of needles from the trees um, to try and make a bit of a bedding. But yeah, being around here is quite rocky. So I decided to just bring um, this inflatable mat with me. No pillow, I'm just gonna have to, yeah, maybe use some clothing to make it with the pillow. Um, but then, so what I had rolled up inside, just got my Alton three by three meter tarp. Just got my flint and steel kit. I've got a Milbank bag to filter water. And as for clothing, I've just got um, some thermal pants. I've got a, a beanie, oh. <laughs> Also two beers. I'm not quite sure if uh, that's sort of in line with the minimal trip, but look, a beer goes down pretty well in a place like this, so I thought I'd treat myself. Um, but yeah, I've just got a jumper, and I've got a dryer bone jacket, like an oil skin jacket as well. And then what we've got in my haversack, so in this top zip pocket, this is where I keep my, um, my first aid kit, which I have wrapped up in, so inside a a um, dry bag, which could potentially use this as a pillow if I want to. But that's my first aid kit. And I've also got my um, yeah, PLB, which I'm not really counting these towards the 10 items because these are essential, like this first aid kit, you've got to bring that. And then in here, I've just got a well, another long sleeve shirt, which I was wearing earlier. And then I've got my, my water bottle, which is a stainless steel water bottle. I've got my fishing gear. I've just got a bushcraft knife this is by core knife and tool once again i'll leave all the uh, link to all this gear in the description below and i've got with me an alton titanium plate and that's all in there oh so actually i've got a little yeah the pot grabber to sort of use with the titanium plate to cook up on and that's pretty much it because just inside here i've just got my food and then i've got my um my camera batteries and things like that so all that that's just all my camera batteries and my GoPro, and then yeah, I've just got my, my food bag in there as well, my tucker bag. So yeah, not a whole lot of gear for this trip, going well, pretty simple. Um, like I said, I would have liked to have maybe try and make more of a bushcraft bed, but just given there's so many rocks around, I decided to bring the air mattress, which is a little bit of a cheat, but um, well, I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> so, all right, have a get these in the water, get them cooled down, and we'll um, yeah, get camp set up.
Well, we've got some clouds moving in. It was predicted to maybe be a little bit of rain tonight. Not much, like less than one mil, but um, what I might do is I might try and get a tarp set up. Like I've got the swag rolled out. That's the best thing about swags. They're so <laughs> quick and easy to set up. But um, since we might get a little bit of rain, I might just, yeah, set up the tarp. But it is uh, just after quarter past four and the sun sets at like just after five. So I've got less than an hour till dark. Which is a bloody shame, like today's just been such a bloody rush. Um, it didn't work out, I was meant to go to another spot this morning. I got to this other spot at 20 past 9 this morning, thinking I had the whole day and there was a bloody locked gate, so I couldn't get through. So I had to like try and figure out another alternative and I eventually came around to this spot. So I didn't end up sort of starting to hike in until close to 1 o'clock. So it's been a bit of a rush, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. So I'm just going to try and quickly get this type set up. Uh, so I can get some firewood collected and <laughs> do everything else before it gets too dark. Alright, so to get the fire started tonight, I'm just going to use the flint and steel. I don't have a hold of chai cloth left, so hopefully I can get it going first go. I'll have to make up some more chai cloth. You just want to put that chai cloth right up to the edge of the flint. But you could also use quartz. There's a bit of quartz around here which I could use, but I'm just going to use the flint for now. Yeah. Just put that in our bird's nest. Oh no, you're kidding. I almost had that. <laughs> and that's the last bit of char cloth I had. Lucky I bought my fur rod. I was so close to going up in flame as well. It was like so right on the edge, so close. <laughs> oh, spewing. I haven't actually used this fur rod yet. Brand new, so I've got to scrape off the outer layer first. There we go. There we go. Which one? The hazy or the wayfarer? I reckon I might try the wayfarer. Oh, it feels good to sit down. I just better pull my legs. <laughs> oh, it feels nice to sit by a fire again. I feel like I haven't sat by a fire for months, eh? Obviously in Tassie you couldn't have fires, so I missed out there, but man, it feels bloody good. 
All right, let's see how this one goes. This is a Green Beacon Brewery Co. Wafer Tropical Pale Ale. I've never had this one before. Oh, that is delicious. Wow. That is a bloody good beer. <laughs> yeah, today's been a bit of a rush. Like I was saying, it was, um, it's annoying that I couldn't go to the other spot. I really wanted to go to this other place, but unfortunately that is a bloody locked gate. I even checked the National Parks website this morning, or last night and then again this morning, just to make sure that it was open. There was nothing on the website saying that there was going to be a locked gate. Drove, what, two and a half hours to get there, and bam, lock gate. So it took me another hour and a half to drive around at this spot. So I pretty much just spent the entire morning just driving around like a bloody headless truck. <laughs> but it was nice to be back here. This is actually the spot that I came with Banjo last year, so I don't know if you guys kind of recognize it, but it's a really nice um, nice river. Just be nice if there's some fish in there. Like, I only had a quick cast this afternoon. I didn't really get to have much time. Like I said, I was under the pump. Um, trying to get camp set up and running out of light. So I only had a few casts, but no bites. I'll have another crack tomorrow morning and see how we go. Hopefully we have better luck. Yeah, that is so good. What the hell? All right, well, let's get some dinner going soon. I'm just gonna build up a better collars and I've got some um, what, lamb, lamb chops to put on. So pretty cute body cam for that. Okay, so while waiting to build up some collars for dinner, Let's make some char cloth. So I've just got some little squares of 100% cotton because you can't use anything synthetic to make char cloth. So I'm just going to use some cotton, but you can also use like things you find in nature, like punk wood and things like that. So what we'll do is we'll just pop this inside this little tin. I'm just going to close the lid. Now I've got a little hole in top of the lid, so you just wait till the smoke stops coming out of that, and that's when it'll be done. And the idea behind um, char cloth is you're just trying to basically cook the material um, without like sort of igniting it. So you're just trying to starve it of oxygen. So Let's get out on the fire. All right, that should be done now. Ow, hot, 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 hot. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, there you go, get some char cloth. We'll just chuck on some mint jelly. Now, I don't know how many swagmen had lamb chops and mint jelly on their, their menu each night, but I am not complaining. Oh, mint jelly and lamb, you cannot beat it. Yum. Let's get stuck in. Well, I didn't bring a fork with me, so I'm just going to do it caveman style. That is bloody delicious. Well, cold beer, lamb chops and mint jelly. I think the uh, old school swagman would probably be laughing at me right now. <laughs> I'm definitely not roughing it, that's for sure. Right, well, I'm gonna demolish this, so I'll catch you guys in the morning. Well, good morning guys. So that was a bit of an interesting uh, sleep last night. I definitely pushed the wool blanket to its limit, I think. Uh, I reckon it probably got pretty close to maybe like three or four degrees. So pretty fresh and yeah, I woke up a few times, um, yeah, a little bit chilly. So well, my top half wasn't too bad because I got my jacket and my um, yeah, jumper on, but yeah, my legs were a little bit cold. So I think I might have to get some thicker thermals, I reckon. 
Um, but in terms of a pillow, I just uh, used my shemag and my long sleeve tee and chucked inside the cotton sack and just put that on top of the um, haversack as well. And that was actually really comfy, actually surprisingly comfy. But yeah, so I just woke up to a bit of a foggy morning this morning. I think I'm gonna get up now and get a little fire going and cook up some pancakes. Let's see if there's any hot embers to get the fire started. There we go. There we go. Alright, so I just need to boil some water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Milbank bag to filter it. And so for those who don't know, a Milbank bag is just a tightly woven um, cloth bag that you fill up with water and then it'll just drip out the bottom and um, all the sediment will collect inside the bag and then you boil the water just to sterilize it. So you should sort of saturate the bag first just to get water like really sort of soaked into the fabric. All right, well the water's boiling, so I'll show you guys a little trick to get the bottle off the fire because I don't have any gloves with me. So what I've done, just got some cordage, just tied a little a stick to the end of it. I'm just gonna drop that in. Actually, I'll get the flames away so it doesn't burn the cordage. Just drop that in. You should be able to just pull that off. There we go. Yeah, so pretty quick and simple way to get the bottle off the fire. All right, so I just realized I didn't bring anything to flip the pancakes with. So I've just got the stick here. And I'm just gonna sort of shave the end off to try and make a bit of a spatula. Yeah, so that should do. All right, let's try my best to not burn it. <laughs> oh, please do not ruin this. Come on. Three, two, one. There we go. Oh, not too bad. Well, for once, it's not too burnt. It's a little bit crispy on the edges, but a hell of a lot better than what I usually do. We just got some Nutella goodness. And we've just got some strawberries. And last but not least, some maple syrup.
Well, I dare say this is probably a fair bit better than what the old swag bin used to eat. Uh, I'd have to try and make some damper out here next time. Um, but I'm terrible at making damper, so I've got to practice that one. Um, but in the meantime, pancakes looks pretty damn good. All right, legends, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little swag cam. It was a really beautiful spot to get out to. It was a shame about the fishing, but there's always next time. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, feel free to check out my other videos and subscribe if you haven't already. That really helps um, me out. And also, feel free to leave a thumbs up, a comment, and all that other you know, YouTube stuff. So, anyway, till next time, guys. Hooroo.